Okay, now we know about the ASTAR pathfinding project script. I'm going to code an example here. We're going to start from scratch and make this unit walk from here to the target game object here. Okay, and uh, firstly, I'm going to add a couple of components and explain some stuff. So, the first thing we need is the pathfinding, and I'm going to add a modifier actually. This modifier is going to be called the smooth, simple smooth. So, it kind of subdivides the path and smooths it out so instead of walking in straight lines and making them you know just really sharp straight lines it kind of smooths the line and makes it look more natural so we can iterate it as many times as we like and there's a couple of types we can use but um, it's all down to your pre um, your preference really guys use whatever one you like but not very important okay the next thing I'm going to add is physics the character controller this is really awesome we can actually use a character controller to move our unit using the pathfinding system so that's really awesome we can use these things and the other component is the A star path script and this is just a blank script so we're going to code the system in this video okay guys so okay the first thing we need to do is use some more like code we're going to use the pathfinding code and okay that's really important we need to include this in every single one of our scripts if we're using pathfinding and uh, okay so the way things work a path has a range of what we call waypoints a waypoint is a vector 3 in 3d space and uh, the array of uh, waypoints make the path okay guys so there might be a waypoint here there might be one here by the wall another one here another one here and the final one might be right down here in our position okay so the range of waypoints make the whole path we're walking across and the waypoints are stored in a, an array called vector path in the pathfinding system so we'll be using the vector path array in the script but firstly I'm going to define a few class variables uh, the first one's going to be a public vector 3 our target position we actually want, we want a target position somewhere to move to I'm going to refer to the seeker the seeker script so the seeker script is awesome. We can use the seeker script to refer to the actual graph we're we're using for our pathfinding system. So we can we're going to use our grid graph in this video. So there's three types of graph explained in the previous video. Um, so the seeker is really important. It's just a component we added to our unit. We need to add it to all of our units, and we can configure the pathfinding the path. Okay. So we also need to refer to the character controller. So we can call the simple move function. The simple move function simply moves the unit at a particular speed, ignores the y value, and automatically applies gravity. Really powerful stuff. Okay, so public path. We're just going to call this path. Okay, so we can refer to the path in the script, and also a public float speed because we want to know speed, don't we? So, okay, the next thing is something to do with the waypoints. So we need to test, well, if the unit's almost at a waypoint, let's stop testing this waypoint and move on to the next one. So this next value basically tells us when we should test for the next waypoint, how many units is it away from this current waypoint before we test for the next one. And how the documentation says this is the max distance from the AI to a waypoint for it to continue to the next waypoint. Payment? No, sorry guys, waypoints. Um, it's really simple. Public float, <clears throat> sorry. Public float, next waypoint distance. I'm going to put 10 units. My world is quite big, so I'm going to put 10 units. Um, if your world is scaled down a little bit, you might want to put 5. I think the default value was 3 actually, so my world must be pretty big. But it doesn't really matter. And uh, let's just store the current waypoint. Current waypoint. So this is going to be a private integer. Current waypoint. Okay, so let's put zero. It's going to be index zero. Always start it. Always start at index zero. So the first waypoint we're going to refer to when the path is calculated. And we're going to calculate the path on the start function. So public void start. So I'm going to generate the path on the start function as soon as the script, uh, the units kind of is alive. We're going to generate it. So in the next few videos, I'll generate the path when we right click because when we right click to a position, then we want the to know the path. But in this example, I'm going to use the start function. So in the start function, we can firstly define the target position, and it's going to be game object find. We're going to find the target game object in our scene and refer to its transform position. 
So let's just double check things. There's a game object called target. We're going to refer to its position. This is where we want the unit to walk to. Okay, let's define a few more things. Let's define seeker, get components, seeker. And let's also define the controller object. Get component, character controller. And once we've defined our controller, we can move on to actually start a path or set the path up. So to do that, set path, we use the seeker object and then we can say start path. This is what we do to create a path or start a path for our unit to walk across. And we're going to start it from the unit's position. So transform position. And we're going to we want to move it to the transfer um sorry, the target position that's where we want it to end and then we can bring in a callback method so when this is complete we want to call a method once the path is started this can be any method name we want I'm going to call it on path complete on path complete okay guys that's all we need to do here for the start method so I'm going to define the uh, on path complete method next so on path complete what happens when this path is set up well we can check for errors and then we can also define our path class variable so then we've got we've actually got a path to work with so we can say if if there is no error so p error and we can bring in the path object here so the path we've just created um, so if there's no errors we can say path equals p to start with so we can refer to that and one of the developers trying to help me out here it's not very good okay and uh, we can also reset our waypoint counter because if we've been using it for previous paths and it hasn't reset, things go things won't be very good because we need to refer to the first waypoint in the in the in the path to make it work. Um, counter current waypoint equals zero. That's all we need to do here, guys. Feel free to do whatever you like in this method. Once the path has started, um, you might want to clean up some code or whatever you want, really. So. That's what we do there on path complete, and uh, we work out the direction the unit moves, and we can move the unit and test the waypoints and stuff, all in the fixed update function or the method. So we say public void fixed update. Everything we're going to do here is um, centered with the path. So if the path doesn't exist, there's no point in calling this fixed update. So we can say if there's no path, just return because we need the path to work. And we can do another test here. We can say if the current waypoint is greater or equal to path vector path so the the array that stores all the waypoint values dot count and we can return as well because in this case the current waypoint will be um, greater than the total amount of waypoints so in this case then there's either an error or the path no longer exists so we've gone past the path and then we're moving on to something else in this case we would just return because we don't need to do anything here okay let's do the direction now let's Let's um, calculate direction of the unit, and to do that, let's create a new variable, dir for direction. So a bit of the math here, so we can refer to the path, vector path at the current waypoint, um, minus the unit's transform position. And we're going to normalize this, guys, okay? So we're normalizing the direction, and then all we need to do is take the direction times it by the speed times time fixed delta time because we're working out the speed on every single frame this is going to up the direction is going to update on every single frame sorry so if that's the case we need to times it by fixed delta time so it's consistent across all platforms okay times it by fixed delta time and then we can actually apply the direction to the unit so we can say the character controller we can refer to the controller and it's got an awesome method called simple move and it can bring in direction and then the unit will move okay guys so the unit moves here that's awesome and uh, we just need to do a few more things here and that's to do with the waypoint so we can check if close enough to the current waypoint if we are move on to the next one or we'll proceed to the next waypoint so we can progress through our path and eventually get to our target position so if vector three distance, we're going to work out the distance between transform position and the current waypoint position. So path, vector path, current waypoint again. If this distance is less than next waypoint distance, which is 10 units I defined at the top, 
then we're going to increment our current waypoint. So we're going to move on to the next one and then return because we're done. All right, guys? Simple as that. Okay, so I think we're done here now. Let's go back to our script, see if there's any errors. I don't think there is. The exclamation point where cannot be on the bottom of the path. Okay, so sorry, guys, we can't use this. We, instead of saying if there's not a path, if the path equals null, I think that'll work uh, better. Let's see if it works. Okay, that's cool. So I thought we could just test if there was if the path was null by putting the exclamation point there. Then it'll be false, but we can't use false. We need to use null. So just the thing I tried. And um, okay, let's see if this works. Awesome. So the unit's moving, and let's go to our scene view here. So the unit, if I select the unit, our character unit, it's moving. Let's go to our. So it's moving to our target position. The next waypoint is three units away. Um, I wanted that to be ten. Let's close the game for a sec. Uh, change it to ten. Okay, and I want the the speed to be a bit faster. Actually, it's a bit slow. Let's do three hundred. Oh, that's better. So the unit's moving across really quickly, and because I've got the smooth, the simple smooth modifier, it should nicely go around the wall. Let's just check. Yes, nice. It's kind of going around in a smooth arc. And then it's going to go to our unit uh, target position. And let's just wait for it to finish. The target position's here. Okay, it's kind of like gliding inwards towards position. So, you know, that might not be very um, realistic. You might want to change the simple smooth thing. And then we're done. So, we're done now, guys. It's going towards the position. And we could code in our script. What do we want to happen next if we wanted to? But that's how we do it. So just to recap, guys, this is our grid. We've created our grid here. We can scan the grid in the scene to show the area we can walk on. Within the character, we've got a bunch of things. We've got the character controller. We can integrate the character controller within the unit itself. We can. Um, every unit needs a seeker script, and we've got our race star path script here, which creates a path on the start function and then tests the waypoints. So every path contains a range of waypoints. We refer to those waypoints in the vector path array. And then we we and then the unit goes from one waypoint to the next waypoint until it reaches the target position. Alright guys. In the next video I'll create the paths once we right click on the map because that's how we do it in the strategy games. We select our units, then right click where we want them to go. Alright guys, thanks for watching the video. See you next